Welcome back to the Great Sober Sex Forum. My name is Nikas and I am still an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm an alcoholic actually who likes to shoot meth alcoholically. That's my, that's my real story. <laughs> um, okay, so our topic today is growing towards your sexual ideal. We all know where we've been and um, that's kind of to hell. <laughs> and... Um, you know, where, where I was, where I, I, I ended up in AA and I needed to, I needed to stop. You know, I kept wanting to stop, but I just couldn't. So I finally came into the program, admitted I was powerless and, um, my, well, my life was purely unmanageable, but, um, but the whole powerless thing for me was, was really important. You know, it was cause you know, my, my, sp my sponsor said to me, he says, you know, because I'm like, no, no, you don't, you don't know who I am. I, I can, I can do, I can move mountains. I can. He's like, yeah, but have you ever said you're never going to do it again? I'm like, well, yeah. He says, and then did you? And I'm like, well, yeah. He says, how many times? I don't know, like a hundred plus. He's like, yeah. So for this one thing, apparently, you're powerless. You don't have the power to actually be able. To keep your word and I was like oh he says that's all powerless means that's all it means so I was like okay well I am powerless and he said like, okay so the next step is you know finding a power greater than yourself that can restore you to sanity you know are, are you willing to look and I was like yeah I, I am because if apparently I need power <laughs> then um, and 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 this thing can be my outside power source well sure I, I will look and then um, you know, step three, I was um, <clears throat> I was ready to turn my will in my life, which is unfortunately everything, <laughs> over to this power and allow it to start telling me what what to do. And you know, and I, and the way I talk about it is like it, it talks to me through intuition. You know, like like you were saying, you know, it's, it's not the right place. It's not. It's like intuition tells us in really short, quick, walk away. It's no, it's not the right place. You know, give that guy twenty bucks. It tells you like really sh quick, short sound bites of what to do. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't like tell you stories. It doesn't. It doesn't um, g give you reasons why. It, it just tells you what to do. Um, and so you know, for me, like you know, turning my will in my life over just means like I'm willing to listen to my intuition <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so that's like that's how I can break that down to like the simplest. So then I had to start doing an inventory and, you know, and we all had to do a, a sexual inventory as part of our, 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 our process, right? We, we, we fears, resentments, um, and, and our, and our sex inventory. And, um, then from that sex inventory, we hopefully build a sexual ideal. And, and a lot of people I know haven't done a sexual, haven't made a sexual ideal. And I'm, I'm always perplexed. And I, I try to ask, well, how come, you know, and I try to get, you know, the reasons range from, well, my sponsors didn't require it to, uh, oh, yeah, my sponsor didn't really talk about sex to um, we didn't even know that was part of it to, you know, um, to um, I mean, to, to I was just lazy and didn't do that. You know, it's like that could be a total sponsee like, yeah, yeah, I, I was supposed to, but I didn't. I didn't. I just went on with my stuff. So, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why people don't, why don't do them. But, um, but in my understanding, this sexual ideal is, is super important because it gives you something to grow towards in this one. I mean, if we're actually doing an inventory on sex, apparently sex is kind of an important thing. <laughs> and, and apparently there's something to be learned in it. So, you know, the book says that <clears throat> we are not the arbiter of anyone's sex conduct. I'm going to read a little portion from the, from the book here. Uh, it says, we're not the arbiter of anyone else's sex conduct, which I, I don't know about you, but I hear people being the arbiter of other people's sex conduct all the time when you go to beatings or when you hear, well, my sponsor told me I can't have sex for a year. You know, I'm sorry, that sounds like you're an arbiter. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's sex is, is not something that I can tell anyone else how to do. I can question somebody. I can ask them and, you know, and find out and, and listen intuitively to my intuition on what kind of directive to give them. So maybe the directive might be, 
why don't you lay off sex for a little bit here? How, how about you do this? You know, but not, you must do that. It's like, that's not, you know, this is, this is a suggestion. You know, so how about you lay off for sex a bit? Just, just see what happens. So we'd hardly be human. We all have sex problems. We'd hardly be human if we didn't. What can we do about them? Um, so the fourth step says, we reviewed our conduct over years past. Where had we been selfish, dishonorate, dishonest, and inconsiderate? Whom had we hurt? Did we unjustifiably arouse jealousy, suspicion, or bitterness? Where were we at fault? What should we have done instead? We got all this down on paper and we looked at it. And that, that to me, I love that little line right there, and I, I use that line a lot when I'm, to, when I'm explaining this to sponsees, is because really that's what we're doing with all of our inventory. We're just getting it down on paper and we're looking at it. So the fourth step is creating this document of, okay, this is what my life actually looks like. You know, where it says, you know, a business which does no regular inventory usually goes broke. Well, you know, if I can't actually look at the honest stock and trade of my life, my sex life here, but, but all of my life and see what shit, this is the stuff that happens where when I do that, Shit goes wrong. So, and it's interesting because like in the four step, this particular line, we get it all down on paper, we looked at it, that's all that's being asked. Put it all down on paper and look at it. And then step five is get honest with yourself, <laughs> with, with God, God already knows, but, but when you get honest with yourself, you're, oh, and then you talk to God and you say, wow, I see, this is, I am, this is me, I get it. So I'm honest with myself, I'm honest with God, and then I get honest with their team and being another sponsor, you know, it's like I tell somebody, yeah, OK. And then, you know, step six is um, I become entirely ready to have God remove my defects of character. So the things that I'm doing wrong, that's fucking my shit up. You know, I become entirely ready to allow something else <laughs> to take these things away. So it's not like like doing the steps isn't, a, oh, I'm going to fix myself. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to decide what's good for me and what's bad for me. I'm going to decide. It's like, you know, when I, when I hear people kind of talking like that from the podium and like, this is not good and that is not good and you cannot do this and you cannot, and you should be, and I'm like, ugh, you know, it's like, that just sounds so not really what AA is all about. AA is I become entirely ready to have God remove the defects of character. And seven, I humbly ask him to remove them. You know, seven steps prayer says, my creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me. And I know what all of me is because I've just looked at it and I've been gone honest with somebody <laughs> and I've talking to you about it. So I'm willing that you should have all of me, the good and the bad. I pray that you now remove from me all the defects of character which stand in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. So I'm asking God to remove the things that, does, that don't work for me to be useful to him and to my fellows. And then I'm asking him to give me the strength to actually do the things that he tells me to do through intuition, <laughs> right? So 10 is four through nine on a regular basis. 11 is sought through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact, my intuition, <laughs> you know, to improve my intuition and be able to like, when God tells me to do something, you know, I do it. So that's what 10 for me is all about. I mean, sorry, 11. And then 12 is having had a special aid and all this stuff. Of course, I tell us other people. My God, it'd be silly not to share this with other alcoholics. Normal people do. <laughs> you know, it's like this is what this is all about. So, so that's just a really a quickie, quickie on the steps. But, but really, getting back to the to the to the fourth step, where you know we get this all down on paper and we we just look at it. So I need to see all the things on all the ways that I fuck up my sex life. I fuck up other people's lives because of my sex life. You know, all the things that I do. So in this way, we tried to shape a sane and sound ideal for our future sex life. We subjected each relation to this test. Was it, a, was it selfish or not? 
We ask God to mold our ideals and help us live up to them. Anytime you see we ask God in the big book, it is a prayer. That is that is a actual prayer. So we ask God, God, please mold my fucking, I, you know, my ideals and my and give me the willingness to to live up to them. You know, that's it's like it's like this it's a communication thing that I got going here. We remembered that our sex powers are God given and therefore good, neither to be used lightly or selfishly, not to be despised or loathed. Whatever our ideal turns out to be, we must be willing to grow towards it. It doesn't say we ought to or we should. <laughs> it says must. There's like hundred and something musts in the big book. And this is one of them. You know, we, we must be willing to grow towards it. We must be willing to make amends where we have done harm, provided that we do not bring about still more harm in doing so. In other words, we treat sex as we treat any other problem. In meditation, wait, 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 wait. We treat sex as we treat any problem. In meditation, oh wait, so I'm supposed to take all my problems to meditation? Yep, apparently so. <laughs> In meditation, we ask God, oh wait, <laughs> that's prayer. So you're saying I gotta pray and meditate with my problems? Okay, I follow you. Okay, cool. I, I'll start. Um, we ask God what we should do about each specific matter. The right answer will come if we want it. And that I, I love that, that, that line because it's like the right answer will come if you want it, if you're willing to actually follow it. You know, um, And the right answer comes if you don't want it either. It's just you don't do it. That's the difference. The right answer comes and I, I'd rather do this. You know, my will says, I want this. I don't want the right answer. I want what I want. Okay. <laughs> God alone can judge our sex situations. Counsels with persons is often desirable, but we let God be the final judge. We realize that some people are as fanatical about sex as others are loose. I think I fall into loose category. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's <laughs> We avoid hysterical thinking or advice. And I can't tell you how much hysterical thinking and advice I hear out there. I mean, that's, you know, when I started the indulgent abstainer group, I, the pushback I got online, like, you're going to make people relapse. And I'm like, well, wait, wait, hold on. It's my understanding that I can't get anyone sober and I can't get anyone drunk. So, you know, sounds like you're giving hysterical advice. <laughs> You know, that sounds like hysterical thinking and an hysterical advice to me, but oh well, everybody's got the process. <laughs> so, um, from our four step inventory, we get everything down on paper, right? And we had a look at it. From that and our new relationship with our creator, we shaped our sane and sound ideal for the future. Hopefully. Hopefully, my son. Um, so where is it that you want to be? Um, having done a sexual ideal or not, um, you know, this is, this is the, the question. This is kind of the question of the seminar today. It's like, what, where, what is it that you're, where are you going? What do you, what do you want? What is, what is it, you know, what is it that you want and you're not doing yet? What is it, you know, like, I, yeah, there's, there's the, the aspects of like, do no harm. But then there's the, ask, the other aspect of like, but what do I really want? You know, what really turns me on? And I think that's something that um, we, uh, we avoid. You know, we, we, we try to like, because, I mean, we can even slut shame ourselves. Like, you know, well, it turns out I like getting fisted. I, when I, before I was sober, that was, when I was high, that was what the fucking freaks did. And then I got sober and I realized fisting is actually something I like because it tangibly, it feels amazing having your hand inside somebody. And then having like a, like a little twink hand, <laughs> somebody with a really small hand, I like you know, having that feeling inside me. It's like, oh my God, this is so like, you know, and so really I had to kind of realize this is who and what I am and this is what I like. And so what stands in the way of me actually letting that be my sex life? You know, is it shame? Is it, you know, for, for me, it started out as being, you know, I, I just didn't, I didn't want to tell people, you know, 
And now I'm telling people I'm in a fucking meeting level and on a microphone. And, you know, because, because I've started living life now in the truth. You know, it's so much easier to just be true and honest about life. And so, you know, and so, and I think, so that's really the, the purpose here, like trying to, trying to figure out what do I want? What, what does my sexual ideal look like? Um, so I thought we'd just do a little exercise, um, with a teeny bit of writing to hand you guys this paper. And, um, I know that sounds very McIntyre housey, <laughs> <laughs> Now, for those online, McIntyre House, by the way, is a, it's a, it's a rehab here in Hollywood where you write you write your way sober. <laughs> um, but hey, it's 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 I gotta say, writing is a, some way to really kind of get inside past your fucking brain. Uh, it kind of side sidesteps your your normal thinking and allows you to get inside. So, um, so we'll do a little bit of writing. Um, so let's just close our eyes for a second uh, and just kind of check in with our true self. You know, the, the self that's just not the chatterbox. It's not, you know, the fucking blah, blah, blah. But the trueness that's kind of in our gut, that thing that's way down deep that says yes or no, or I want or I don't want or stop or go. or And just ask that thing. Um, What's my true sexual ideal? What is it that I really want? What am I looking for? Where do I want all this to end up? Um, and, and, and then the second part of that, that natural question would be like, and what's standing in my way? You know, and part of my journey has been realizing that the things that are standing in my way are actually things that I have created. It's like, what am I putting in my own way? So, so, you know, the, the, the next place we can actually take this is, is just turning this into a prayer, right? So just uh, turn it into a we ask God sort of thing. So, God, please show us all what our truest sexual ideal is to be. What it is that really turns us on. What it is that we really, really, really we want in our deepest heart of hearts. Allow us to write a little bit of that and then also reveal to us, if you will, please, God, what is it that stands in our way? What are we roadblocking ourselves <laughs> or cock blocking? What, how are we standing in the way of ourselves getting what it is that we really want? Please, God. Let us know. Fill us with intuition. Fill us with right thought, right action, right response, and right ability to write. <laughs> so let's take a few minutes here, and um, you got two pieces of paper, you got a pen, and uh, just what is it that you really want, and what's standing in your way? So we're going to take a quick little break here, and then we'll start this just right after a few minutes.